Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bodhi and welcome to my reading nook. So today's video is following on from my uh, series to do with comparing and contrasting the Netflix series of a series of unfortunate events and um, the book series of it. So as it goes at the moment on Netflix, there are eight episodes, uh, two episodes per book. So it covers the first four books in the series. Um, last Monday I uploaded a video giving my thoughts and opinions on episode 1 and 2, which is the bad beginning, and this video is talking about episodes 3 and 4 and comparing them to the book, which is The Reptile Room. So I have a couple of notes here, and then I was taking notes as I was sitting down and watching it. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to compare and contrast some of the similarities and differences between the book and the series. So if you're interested, keep on watching and apart from that you know leave any comments that you think about the series down below and feel free to subscribe if you want to keep watching as I continue this series for the next couple of Mondays yeah okay so to give a basic rundown of the reptile room which is book two and again before I start there are going to be spoilers in this so if you haven't watched it or you haven't read it and you don't want any spoilers I suggest not watching um, but a basic rundown of this is it follows on from the last book which um, the children have just escaped from Count Olaf and they've been taken to their new caretaker which is where this book begins now the new caretaker is Uncle Monty, otherwise known as Dr. Montgomery Montgomery. Yes, he has the same first name and last name. He is a herpetologist, herpetologist, um, who is a studier of snakes. So, to sum up what the book is, he lives in a house, he has a reptile um, room, hence the name, where he has all these exotic snakes. He's one of the world's most renowned herpetologists. And uh, when the children come to him, he's planning to take them on an expedition to Peru to do more study on other reptiles. And um, Count Olaf pops up as his new assistant, Stefano, who has murdered the old assistant, Gustav. Eventually, Count Olaf as Stefano um, murders Uncle Monty and then is eventually found out by, the ch well, the children already know it's him, but they eventually uncover his true identity and he escapes yet again and the children move off to their next caretaker, which will be episodes five and six or book number three, which is The Wide Window. We'll start with episode three. Episode three... I really enjoyed Uncle Monty's home. It was very reminiscent of what uh, is described in the book. Um, especially, you know, it has this very observatory type glass room feel. I really enjoyed that. And as does the reptile room. And it, again, it has that, you know, glass kind of panes everywhere. And it, it just, it has that observatory kind of feel. Although what I didn't like was the animation of the animals and of course I know that there's going to be animations there sometimes I just thought they were a bit over the top but I did like seeing the strange reptiles that were there for example the flying lizard that was going around or the screeching iguana another thing that I really liked which was similar to the book was um, there was a cliffhanger moment where Sunny is bitten by the incredibly deadly viper now in the book she the viper leaps out of the cage and um, bites her on the chin and then following straight on from that uh, the next chapter starts with the narrator Lemony Snicket saying oh I didn't mean to cut you off there which is what they also do in the series um, the one thing I didn't understand about this episode and you know this these two episodes really was the labyrinth I don't understand why they introduced the labyrinth uh, it didn't really have you know, it, it doesn't exist in the book at all, so I'm a little confused as to why they introduced it, and there was no real need for it apart from, you know, Count Olaf's escape ploy. Um, so I thought that was a bit pointless. Um, I did like Count Olaf as Stefano, I thought it was very funny. Um, 
Although I'm unsure of why when he first gets there he tries to murder the kids and says, you know, I'm running up and down the stairs with a knife and, you know, I'm sorry, it's just my daily exercise ritual, whatever he says. But then he has a funny moment with, um, you know, Uncle Monty about it where Uncle Monty says, oh, I'm so sorry, kids, I didn't realise. I understand you're a bit startled because Stefano was chasing you up and down the stairs with a very sharp knife. Like, little things like that are... are they don't exist in the book, but they're kind of funny, so it works. Um, one part that I really liked was the breaking of the fourth wall, and I actually wrote down the dialogue, where, you know, Uncle Monty is inviting Stefano to the movies, and Stefano was like, no. And he says, you know, I prefer long-form television to the movies. It's so much more convenient to consume entertainment from the comfort of your own home. And then he has this very long stare, like, directly at the camera. And I'm just, I just thought the whole breaking of the fourth wall, especially because it's a series on Netflix, you know, where that hype is, you know, you sit down and watch about 10 or 12 episodes on Netflix in one go. So I thought that was very funny. Um, I thought Uncle Monty's performance was a bit... I felt like it flopped, but I don't necessarily think it's the actor's fault. I think that's more in the writing, um, and I'll get more into that um, when I wrap up the overall thoughts. Um, there were a lot of funny one-liners, for example, where um, Uncle Monty says to Stefano, oh, so how did you study herpetology, which is the study of snakes? And then uh, um, Stefano is like, but I don't know anything about mouse holes, you know, the whole play on words with herpes and everything like that. Um, one part of that episode, which was kind of the end, was I don't understand the whole movie scene. It doesn't happen in the book, aside from like a one or two page, you know, scene where they're sitting at the movies and watching it and Stefano is sitting there with popcorn and hugging all the popcorn and then that's basically it. But in this episode it was all, you know, there were strange codes popping up on the screen and Uncle Monty's there with like his gold spyglass and interpreting it and there's then comes through a message, you know, um, Monty take the kids to Peru, which I'm assuming was sent through like their parents or sent through someone with the whole gold spyglass kind of association society that comes up later in the series but like a lot later in the series like book nine and book ten so I'm unsure why they're bringing it up now. Another thing that I didn't like about the whole Uncle Monty take the kids to Peru was it took away from what was in the book and again this comes down to the writing of it rather than how Uncle Monty was portrayed where you know in the book um he's going there for an expedition be it for his work and he's taking the kids there and everything like that but in the movie it's like take them there they're in danger so I didn't really understand it and a big part of that book there's a section where you know Uncle Monty bonds with the children so much from saying you know I need an inventor and I need um, a reader and I need someone that bites things so obviously the archetypes of the three, three children and, you know, they spend all this time prepping for it and researching and, you know, Klaus is in the reptile room reading stuff on everything to do with Peru and Violet is in there, you know, helping build traps and Sunny's in there biting up rope and everything like that. But then, you know, all of that is taken away by introducing this whole, you have to take them to Peru, they're in danger kind of ploy. And again, I mentioned it in the last video, I have no idea why the parents are there, they're meant to be dead. Um, I'm not really enjoying what them being there, I kind of wish they were dead because I just don't think they should be there. Um, and then I don't understand why the episode ended with Uncle Monty being kidnapped in the movie theatre by the two, uh, by the twin women, so two of Uncle, um, two of Count Olaf's henchmen. I don't really understand why they were kidnapped by him and then he suddenly reappears and he says, Stefano, I know you, you're a spy from the Herpetological Society and, you know, you can get out of our lives forever, kind of thing. And that's where it more or less ends and then, um, Uncle Monty dies. So yeah. then we move on to episode four. And episode four starts out with Stefano, the kids um, discover Uncle Monty's body. That was very similar to the book, uh, where they walk down and he's there and he looks kind of gruesome, which I thought was whatever. Um, but then Stefano says, you know, we're all going to Peru now. And, you know, the children say no. And 
then Stefano suddenly has Sunny in a suitcase and uses her as leverage to get the kids in the car. But then suddenly the doctor says, you know, because Mr. Poe pops up and, you know, they all go back to the house and then suddenly the doctor pops up who is, you know, the, one of the henchmen. And then the doctor says, well, the nurse says, oh, this house is quarantined. And then suddenly all these henchmen pop up, like all of them pop up as like a police, as, a, as like police, uh, a crime scene investigator and all these different things and I was kind of like, what are you doing here? None, none of you are meant to be here. Um, the one part that I did like about this episode though was Mr. Poe has a breakdown when uh, Sunny kind of shows that the incredibly deadly viper, which is used as the excuse for the murder by Stefano, and says, you know, he was bitten by the incredibly deadly viper, which, you know, if you watched it, you know that it's not deadly at all. Um, and she's there playing with the snake, and Mr. Poe has a breakdown, which I thought was hilarious in the book, where, you know, um, he says, it's bitten her, he cried, it bit her, it bited her, calm down, get moving, call an ambulance, call the police, call a scientist, call my wife, this is terrible, this is awful, this is ghastly, this is phantasmagorical, this is... And then, like, I really enjoyed seeing that on the screen, I thought it was really, really well done. Following on from that, though, in the book, the Mamba du Mal venom is used, which is done in the episode, but, you know, the way that Count Olaf is finally uncovered is through... Klaus and um, Violet doing their own research, so Violet goes and breaks into uh, Count Olaf's suitcase while Klaus is in the reptile room reading um, books on just trying to find information that will help them. But because all the henchmen are there, Klaus has to secretly break into the reptile room to read, which does not happen in the book at all. Um, and then you know, one of the key elements of that story is when Klaus uses his knowledge from reading to, you know, highlight and show that the Mamba du Mal strangulates um, its a victim and causes deep bruises, which isn't, which wasn't on Uncle Monty, and that was missing, and I thought that took a, a lot away from it because, you know, these kids aren't, you know, Superman, but they have these characteristics like the reading like the uh inventing where you know those are the things that are helping them cope and helping them survive and you know to take that away it kind of doesn't work as well and then all the all the animals start mutinying against the henchmen which I thought was kind of pointless and ridiculous because that doesn't happen either and then the children chase Olaf through the labyrinth which again I have no idea why it's there and then he escapes through that and then suddenly there's a statue in the middle of the labyrinth and it's Jacqueline who was uh, Mr. Poe's secretary from episode one and two and again I have no idea why the hell she's there because she doesn't exist at all and she's there with her spyglass and then you know and then she says she tells the kids, make sure you go to your Aunt Josephine's, which again does not happen at all, because Mr. Poe is the one, you know, determining where they go and what they do, and they have no idea. So, and that's where the episode ends, more or less. They start heading off to Aunt Josephine's, which is where, what, where book number three picks up. Now, so my overall thoughts on it is I dislike this whole spy detective element that's been added, you know, with uh, Jacqueline hunting Count Olaf on you know, the ship, the Prospero ship that, you know, they were meant to go on to go to Peru. Like, I don't, like, that was so pointless to me. The whole idea of everyone, you know, using these spy glasses and uncovering secret messages from movie screens and stuff, I don't like it. I don't think, I don't think it has a point. You know, a big part of this story is how the kids cope with this, but now it's taking away from them and it's showing that, you know, they're just part of this massive plot when it isn't really that in the book, it's more Count Olaf tries to keep getting their fortune and they keep overcoming it. And that's basically it. So the whole spyglass, I have no idea why it's there. Uh, following on from that, again, why are the parents alive? I don't see the point of it. Um, again, it's for the writing. I don't know how they're going to write the rest of the series, but I know for a fact that the parents died in book one and they don't reappear at all, so I have no idea why they're there. Um, Uncle Monty was not likeable in this episode, nowhere near as likeable as he was in the book. This book is probably my favourite one from the series. 
and a big part of that is because Uncle Monty is so fatherly and he's so kind of loving and endearing and caring and that just didn't come across in the episode or at least not nearly as much as it does in the book so I didn't really like how he was portrayed and I think again that comes down to the writing. Um, I did enjoy the reptile room visually and the reptiles visually, I did enjoy that aspect and again I dislike the whole Peru storyline where they're escaping to Peru to, you know, for god knows whatever reason and suddenly the parents are in Peru as well and I just didn't like that either. So yeah, those are my thoughts and opinions on uh, episodes 3 and 4 of a series of unfortunate events. Um, next Monday I'll be back with episodes 5 and 6 and also book 3 which is The Wide Window and I'll be doing my comparison between them and giving my thoughts and opinions. Again, as I said earlier, if you have any opinions of your own, if you're liking the series or anything like that, let me know down in the comments. Feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next week.